much for joining us. My name is Mandith Kaur, and I am an Ashoka Young Changemaker Fellow. I'm super excited to learn more about the work that you've been doing. Um, can you start by giving me a brief overview of the Lift Up Louisville song that you wrote and the work you've done so far? Yeah, yeah, the Lift Up Louisville song, you, as you may have heard, is a collaborative song that a lot of different musicians here in Louisville wrote as a part of a response to the situation that we're all going through uh, from a cultural and musical perspective. And it originated because the mayor of Louisville asked me to help lead a program called Lift Up Lou, which was started just about the time that people were sheltering in place. We call it Healthy at Home uh, here in Kentucky. And the mayor felt that having a program that focused on positive uh, reinforcement and community connections would be really an important part of the process of keeping people uh, positive and keeping them connected and, and also just dealing with the social isolation element that he wisely predicted would become a major factor as everybody changed around their, their entire lives very quickly. So he asked me to help lead that effort called Lift Up Lou and he had one specific request and that was to create a city song. Uh, many cities have a famous song associated with them, of course, New York, New York, uh, or I Left My Heart in San Francisco. There are lots of great songs like that, and, and Louisville doesn't have one exactly uh, along those lines. And so I promised him I'd help make a song that would, would be something that would represent this moment in time for all of us. So I got together with a lot of my musical friends here in town and the, tried to make it represent all the different styles and genres. Louisville is a great music city. Uh, and it has a very collaborative musical population here, a great musical community. And so we all put our heads together and figured out a way to actually compose a piece remotely, uh, all from our homes and, and really contribute so that it wasn't just one person's song and a bunch of people provided extra parts to it. That's normally how, how a project like that might go, but we wanted to genuinely compose it together. And uh, everybody was incredibly generous with their time and, and efforts. And, uh, eventually, we, uh, we, we launched the song with a great uh, video that goes along with it. And the whole idea was simply to do nothing, nothing more than, well, two things, actually. One, to, uh, to bring people something that would make them feel proud of where they live, which is very important, that they, that they still feel a sense of community and belonging and connection to, to your neighbors. But also, it raised money for our major response fund. Uh, here in town, which is called the One Louisville Fund, which I think has uh, already raised in excess of $7 million, which is pretty impressive for a town of our size. It's in line with, with other cities like um, LA, which is you know, pretty cool for That's Louisville's incredible. a very generous town. Yeah. And can you tell me a little bit about the power of music during times like this? Well, it's pretty amazing to have seen how musicians immediately took to all the networks that they had available to them, social media, YouTube, uh, any kind of uh, internet following that they might have already developed to share music right away. Uh, I think that, that, that musicians are kind of cultural first responders in that they didn't wait for people to invite them to do this. They didn't wait for people to ask them. And they actually did not think about monetizing it. They just leapt at the opportunity to share their music because they saw that there was a need for it. And I think in, in an age when there's already been such a challenge to the, to the music industry by uh, an internet that we still don't fully understand. You know, I think maybe the film industry has capitalized on it and, and kind of owned it in a way that the music industry has never done. The music industry has been very uh, kind of, um, it's, it's spaced out in terms of its approach as to how to use the internet in an effective way. You get people very restrictive on one side and others that think that you know, everything should be out there and every, everything in the middle. Um, and all of a sudden musicians didn't ask any questions about how this, this might benefit them. They just gave. And that's an example of the selflessness that, that I think um, is maybe a, a representation of the best of what cultural ambassadors should be doing. Um, and that's not to say that they shouldn't be compensated for their work. They should be. Uh, but th at that moment, when everybody started staying inside, musicians felt like their music was a, was a powerful tool to heal or to inspire or to keep people um, you know, connected to, to an important part of their, their cultural lives that they just couldn't access anymore. And it really was a great example of how a whole, basically the entire industry just said, right now what's needed is, is the sharing. Uh, we'll figure out the rest later on.
And that Definitely. is a really beautiful thing. And did you expect it to become so popular for your song to raise $7 million? What's that been like for you? Well, the song didn't raise seven million dollars. That the whole fund raised seven right. million dollars. So we've we, <laughs> I would be if if we could raise seven million dollars from the song, then we'd really um, uh, be in the record books right there. But uh, that's a that's a good goal for ourselves. Uh, it was, but the song seemed to be really popular. And and one of the goals for the song wasn't just to be a great song or just to raise money for the one fund uh, program. It was actually to uh, give people a connection to Louisville's music community, which has been really underrepresented on a national level. It's really high quality. It's a really special vibe that the musicians have with each other that you just don't find in a lot of places because it's kind of a smaller music community. It's it's forced us in a great way to interact with each other and, and collaborate. Uh, where in big cities, a lot of times, people don't collaborate outside their usual boxes. People specialize in one genre, one style of music, and, and they don't often cross between them unless very specific circumstances align. Here we're always doing that and I feel like it's a really uh, special moment for us to have shown off our, our entire musical community on a national level and people really took notice of it and, and that's, it's a second kind of diplomacy but it's an important part of it, it's kind of cultural diplomacy. If, if people see your town as having an asset like that, all of a sudden they're interested in moving to that town. It, 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 it creates positive reinforcement about Kentucky and Louisville that we often don't get. A lot of times people on the coast and, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I'm from the Bay Area. I know that there are lots of people on the coast, they don't have a favorable view of, of states like Kentucky or cities like Louisville, even though they might not actually be very familiar with places like this. So it's our job to tell our story in a positive way. So if a song like this gets a lot of national press and people get excited about the city, it can change the way people view who we are. And, and uh, we need that, that, that kind of positive messaging to be a big part of the growth uh, cycle for the city. Definitely. And you mentioned that there's a lot of teamwork happening right now. So what's the role of collaboration been in your Changemaker journey? Well, I think that, that especially in towns of our size, we have about a million people here. Uh, so it's not a small city by any means. It's a, it's a big, big city uh, with um, a very diverse population, much more diverse than a, a lot of people might assume if they've never been here. They might think, you know, based on uh, maybe what they've heard about the, the politics of the state of Kentucky, they might just assume it's one thing that doesn't represent Louisville at all, honestly doesn't represent Kentucky uh, at all. But because it's not the size and scope of a city like New York or Chicago, it means that you have to work together to get things done. You can't do it in your own silo. The funding isn't there. Um, the resources aren't there to do something just single-handedly. And why would you want to do that anyway? You know, you want um, you want good ideas to have ownership um, from a, a, a wide base of people. You want a lot of people to believe in it and to own it and to further a good idea. In, in the end, it doesn't matter who came up with the idea. It matters that a good idea gets done. And a lot of what I've tried to do at the Louisville Orchestra, which is, you know, that's my actual job is, is to be the conductor of the orchestra. But a lot of my, my work is not so much about just getting on the podium and conducting. It's about giving people a platform to come up with the ideas that we think could transform the, the, the community or transform the society. And that means truly working together, listening to what other people um, uh, dream up, uh, listening to what people need and want from their cultural represent representatives. And I think it's really important then that, that when you work together, you're doing it in a way that lifts everybody up simultaneously. So it's not about um, you know just the Louisville Orchestra being successful or me being successful as a conductor. It's about how do we change the, the, the way artists and people who work in the cultural world communicate and dialogue with the people that they live amongst. That requires everybody to be on the same page. And there are a lot of examples of that as we've worked on this for, for a long time. But it also means right now that collaboration is more important than, than ever. Because the worst thing would be maybe one group survives um, and if the whole culture of the town sinks down, who cares if you have one orchestra or one museum? That's not the kind of city that you want to live in. We need all of these places to, to be creative and to grow and to think about um, you know, great solutions to the issues that we're dealing with. Definitely. So what was it like for you to pivot your focus from just being a conductor to now helping the community and working on COVID-19 relief? Well, I think that like many people, we've seen a rapid shift in, in you know, entire industries 
within a matter of weeks yeah. or even just days. But honestly, I've been going through a personal shift for years and years where most musicians that they grow up dreaming of, about being a professional conductor, a professional composer or instrumentalist, maybe they want to play in the New York Philharmonic, that's their dream. I, I dreamed about being a conductor from when I was nine years old and first saw the San Francisco Symphony. But, but what, what I've been going through in this shift has taken place over the last you know, decade or more, where you realize that what the world needs is not just another person waving their arms and peacing out after every show. You know, what we need is leadership. And, and um, it's hard to justify the expense and the complexity of an organization like an orchestra if you're not leading and serving. And so a lot of my work is more about asking what the orchestra can do for the community has nothing to do with that. that that's important. You've got to be a great conductor. You've got to study the scores. You have to know everything about the music itself. You have to practice. That's right. part one. Part two is asking, how can I contribute to society? And that's not something that you get trained to do. Your music teacher is not going to really talk about that. So you have to find that in yourself. And so I'm always asking, what's the impact? What's the change? What's the transformation that can be achieved by doing this project? And, uh, you know, I, I try and encourage everybody in, in the arts to think that way, because otherwise we'll always be on the, the periphery. We'll always be on the outskirts of society if we're just doing whatever we want to do and, and stay in a room with, uh, you know, four walls and, and, and keep the doors closed. We have to be asking about what, what we can do to serve. Right. That's really powerful. So what would you say then is the power of the individual to make a change? Well, I think that um, you know, everybody should be thinking about the world that they want to see. And you can't, you can't just wave a magic wand and, and, and have the platform that you, you think that you might deserve, even if you want to see those changes. So you have to be comfortable knowing that going down the path of, of what you believe in is enough. You know, these days, the, the dynamics of who has influence and power and who can truly change things are so complex and beyond our ability to determine. They, they're, it's like, a, you know, the, the saying of the butterfly wings moving and a hurricane could potentially start. It's like that, you know, the internet has, we, we can't understand how things happen and why they, why they take place the way that they do. The world's so complex. But I think that we all have to be comfortable knowing that if, if you believe in something, we all should stand for something and believe in something. Um, as long as you're going in that direction and that's, you're, you're honest, with yourself about that direction. Think you're doing what you can. And maybe a giant avenue may open up and, and, and you may have a, you know, an audience worldwide that cares about what you say. Or maybe you can just influence um, you know, a couple people that you live amongst and still create that kind of change. Um, we don't know what, what we're allotted to in, in life, but either way, you're, you're making the impact that, that maybe needs to be made on the world if, you, if it's something that you're honest about and believe in. Of course. So what advice would you give other people who want to step up and make a change right now? Well, I think that, you know, right now what we need more than, than ever, especially in this, this country, we need from anybody that can, can do this to, to be just selfless about how we can all improve as a society because there are so many broken components. Um, and I think it's hard to know even where to start when you're just overwhelmed by the kind of crushing tragedies that we deal with both from this particular situation but also just the just the extraordinary inequality and and the the it's the uh, constant like a, a tide of bad news that comes at us because of our overexposure to everything that's happening around us and i think what what i would encourage every everybody to do and i'm still trying to do this my, myself is just to say okay let's let's not just let the, 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 the endless waves of bad news prevent us from thinking about the, the, the world that could be. And then we all just go to work, you know, like a bee colony or something like that. We all have our little jobs and we all just go to work. And sometimes it's, it's okay to not, for the bee colony, not to know that a storm is coming a hundred miles away. That might affect them, it might not affect them, but they don't necessarily need to know that to do their job really well in contributing to, to a world that, that uh, could get better. And sometimes it's better not to know that because that just might make you want to fly away and not be a part of anything. And we need more than ever people that actually contribute together to a shared vision. 
And uh, it's hard to do that when, you're, when, when leadership is not always giving you a shared vision that we buy into. You know, with people, people need that. We need something inspiring and hopeful to look forward to, to motivate us to make those changes. Um, but if we are not getting it from the top, then we make it ourselves. That's what I really believe in. Um, and, uh, you know, I try, I try and live by those principles, even in my little organization, it's just a tiny sliver of one small town within one, you know, small part of the country, which is a small part of a much bigger world. And, um, it's a model though. And I, th I believe that what, if you model something and, and live by it, that scales, um, to, to any level of, of the planet. I love that. It's amazing how you're just taking charge of the situation yourself. So. That's what I've been given, and, and that's, my, that's my platform, and by God, if I'm not going to run with it, then I'm really not doing my job, you know what I mean? Like, if I sat this out and said, that's somebody else's problem, that, that's how we got into this mess in the first place. Too many people wanted more stuff than they wanted to give, and, uh, you know, not COVID-19 specifically, but I would say America as a country, and a lot of the times, it's, just, it's not because anybody was... You know, nobody wanted to do something harmful. Nobody tried to be a part of a problem. Nobody says that in the morning, I'm going to be a part of the problem today. But a lot of people weren't given um, the invitation to be a part of the solution. And they, maybe they weren't told that you can, uh, you can foresee solutions yourself, that you, you have that right. You don't have to wait for somebody to give you a job to do or a role to play. You make that role, especially these days, um, you know, we, we, we can't rely on somebody to, to give us a, a path forward. We, we have to make that for ourselves. Yeah, and it's incredible how your song and just inviting all these musicians to collaborate gave people that agency. So well, that's, that's right. A lot of musicians were sitting at home going, how do I contribute to this? I feel like, you know, maybe I'm sharing some music on some Facebook live events, but how can we feel like we're, we're contributing to our community, not just putting more content out? And this is, again, it's a small little model of it, but it did give us that opportunity to say, we're, we're building something bigger than ourselves here, and we're doing it for our community, not for us. And that's what we need. You know, I think that was a, it was a great example of it. And we could do a lot more of that as a, as certainly as a cultural sector, but honestly, in every part of, of society, if the airline industry and the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the food industry all thought that way and worked towards those goals and collaborated, uh, the tech industry for sure. Um, I mean, I think we get a better world out of it, not just, you know, more financially successful individuals and companies, which I'd like to see, obviously. Totally. Same here. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for all that you've done for the community and our country right now. It's incredible to see how you're stepping up to make a change. Well, thank you very much.